welcome to the lecture on casting defects. So, we will discuss about defects in castings and we will discuss about types of casting defects, causes and its remedies. So, as we know that when we cast any material, we are basically liquefying the metal by heating it to a very high temperature above its melting temperature, then we are holding at that temperature, we are basically heating to a temperature higher than its melting temperature that is the degree of superheat, then we are pouring it in the mold. So, basically after pouring in the mold, the metal gets solidified, then after solidification we are taking the material out of the mold. So, when we use the sand mold, the mold is broken because mold is only once used and when we use the multiple use molds like metal or graphite, then we need not to break the mold every time. So, we have during this process a number of transformations taking place, the metal converted from solid to liquid state, then further converting from liquid to solid state and in that process at many places and also when it is poured during the pouring process, then further while it is entry into the mold and then further during the solidification inside the mold. So, all these uh, phases they there is likely that there may be certain kind of defects because of the uh, because we are not able to maintain the parameters in, in the idealized manner. So, there may be certain defects and these defects can normally be categorized under the heading gas defects. So, gas defects means the defect is in the form of gaseous pockets or because of the gases which are formed they lead to such kind of defects. So, that is known as gas based defects and under that you have blow holes, open blows, air inclusions or pinhole porosities. Similarly, you may have shrinkage cavities because during the solidification process you may have the shrinkage. So, because of that if there is not adequate care taken up then that may lead to the formation of shrinkage cavities. There may be defect because of the molding materials and that is uh, cuts and washes, metal penetration, fusion, run out, rat tails and buckles, swell and drop then you may have the defects in the category of pouring metals. So, uh, that is when we are pouring and that is misrun and cold shut and also the slag inclusions and then metallurgical defects like hot tears, hot spots etc. So, let us discuss one by one about each kind of defect. So, once we so see the gas defects. So, gas defects in that blow holes or open blows, they are basically because of the entrapment of the gases inside the metal. So, what happens when we are basically heating the material, the material at higher temperature normally has a larger solubility of the gases. So, many gases tend to get dissolved at higher amount at higher temperature. So, when we are cooling as the temperature comes down the solubility of these gases go on decreasing drastically. Now, these gases require to go out of the mold. So, they must go out of the mold so that they are entry through the mold and may ensure a defect free casting as far as these gases defects are concerned. Now, if these gases are not able to go out then and if they are inside the casting then they are known as blow holes. So, these blow holes are those gaseous cavities where which are found inside the casting casting surface and if they are on the surface of the casting and they are open to atmosphere I mean if they are open at the surface then they are known as 
open blues. Similarly, air inclusions this is also again a variety of the gaseous defects because of the air entrapment or because of the sucking of air and that is air inclusion and then pinhole porosities. So, pinhole porosities is typically because of the gases like hydrogen. So, we know just like other gases the hydrogen when it is basically uh, into the melt and if it is not able to go out of the melt. So, in that case hydrogen comes out in the later stages and it goes in the form of very fine holes. So, that gives a free very fine pin hole type of structure on the surface that is known as pin hole porosities. So, all these gaseous defects are basically the causes of these gaseous defects is because the gases which are there inside the melt they are not able to go out and there is no I mean the flushing of the gases out of the melt or out of the mold could not take place and they are basically entrapped. So, the reasons may be because of the improper permeability of the mold because if there is not proper permeability then these uh, gases are not able to go out and that is how it is stuck in. Also you, you if you do not do the proper degassing. So, many a times we need to go for degassing techniques and if you do not do the proper degassing then these gases are entrapped. So, you have to go for proper degassing so that much of the gases which are dissolved into it they are basically removed during this degassing process. So, that also is one of the reasons. So, once we know the reason the remedy is basically known to us. So, if the it is because of the proper degassing then proper use of degassers should be its remedy. So, you must go for proper degassing techniques you must have the mold quite permeable. So, that you this allows the gases to escape through it. So, that is one thing. Another thing is if you have a very high pouring temperature. So, as the temperature increases the chances of gases being absorbed into the melt is higher. So, you must also maintain a proper pouring temperature you must not increase the temperature to a larger extent because at larger temperature of pouring you have more chances of gases being absorbed. You also should have proper getting practice. So, there is chances of uh, air being sucked if there is proper if there is lack of proper getting system. So, in that case you may have the entry of these uh, gases from the outside and if they go inside they may form if they go inside then there will be air inclusions. So, all these are the remedies once we know the causes the remedies are known and based on that proper grinding practice proper permeability level proper use of degassers all these can be adopted to take care of such defects. If you look at the defects if you see these are the cases of micro porosities what you see here these white structures they are the cases of micro porosities. You see the pin holes where pin like pins because the gases try to come out of it. So, pin holes so like that these are the blow holes or open blows if it is on the surface. So, that is why you have blow holes and open blows showing here. Then coming to the shrinkage cavities. Now, shrinkage cavities are basically the cavities which are formed because of the shrinkage during the solidification process. So, as we know when there is solidification taking place when there is formation from liquid to solid and solid part basically because of that uh, the shrinkage takes place we have already discussed about the shrinkages and the shrinkage amount is basically compensated by properly supplying the adequate amount of metal from the riser. So, if the riser is able to feed 
the amount that is required in the case in those areas where shrinkage is taking place then uh, it is fine, but if not then in that case the shrinkage cavities are likely to occur. So, we know that the reason is because shrinkage is bound to happen because once we have the formation of liquid to solid state in those cases since the density there is density change from liquid to solid state. So, there will be volume changes. So, because of that you will have shrinkages and that that is because of the you know uh, improper kind of material which is there. So, if you have a large solidification ranges you will have uh, shrinkages more likely to occur. Also shrinkage defects is likely to occur if you have the improper uh, mold making. If you have certain portion of the casting which is isolated and it remains isolated during the solidification process and if it is not basically attached to the active feed channels then in those portions the shrinkage may occur. So, shrinkage cannot be avoided, but rather shrinkage has to be compensated. So, if any portion is basically cut off or if it is isolated then in that case shrinkage may occur. So, you have to see that proper directional solidification is maintained, proper directional and progressive solidification is there. So, there is no much control on the progressive solidification however, but on the directional solidification you can have proper control, you have the proper placement of riser, proper size of riser and proper use of chills that may avoid the shrinkage cavities. So, shrinkage cavities will be like this if you see this is a normal cavity where the shrinkage cavity will look like this. So, that has to be basically supplied with uh, extra metal so that there is no shrinkage defect. So, the defects like cuts and washes, metal penetration, fusion, run out, rat tails and buckles, swell or drop they are under the category of molding material defects. So, these defects occur because of the improper molding materials like cuts and washes. So, that is basically because of the poor molding material. So, at many a points these there will be uh, the washes or this sand is getting washed away it's, if it is not properly ramped up if it is not have it does not have adequate strength in that case there will be washing of the sand. So, if they, that is there is no adequate strength green strength or dry strength of the molding material in those cases such uh, defects are likely to occur. So, these defects are because of the improper strength of the material and also because of very high velocity of the molten material. So, in that case it is not able to sustain that uh, high velocity or high impact and then they get washed away and basically it is because of the improper strength of the molding material. So, they get washed away and you have such defects. Then you have different kind of molding material defects like cuts and washes, metal penetration, fusion, run out, rat tails and buckles, swell and drop. So, they are basically because of the improper molding materials. Coming to the cuts and washes, so under the molding material defects you have defect that is cuts and washes. Cuts and washes I mean under this variety of defect there will be rough surfaces appearing on the casting surface. So, they are basically because of the cuts or there is washing away of the molding material typically sand when the metal is entered into the mold. So, that is because of the improper strength of the molding material or improper binding of the molding material or sand grains adequate inadequate strength of the molding material. So, for that you will have to have proper strength of the molding material proper use of binders properly baked mold in those cases these cuts and washes can be avoided. Metal penetration. So, many a times the metal 
penetrates in between the sand grains and there will be rough surface on the casting surface. So, that is known as metal penetration. So, basically metal has penetrated in between the sand grains. So, this happens normally because of the very coarse sand used and that basically is the interface between the molding material and the molten metal. So, in those cases if you have very coarse sand which is in contact with the molten metal, the molten metal will go in between the coarse sand grains and that will appear as a very rough surface. So, that is known as metal penetration. So, to remove such defects you need to have a use of mold wash or finer sand particles, fine sand or fine facing sand must be used. So, that the molten metal at the surface in, is in contact with fine sand particles and you get the fine surface finish. Fusion. So, fusion is basically the fusion of the sand and the metal. So, at the surface of the molten metal the temperature is highest. So, the sand if it is not have proper refractoriness value then it may try to fuse and gives you a glassy surface. So, basically it is because of the fusion of the sand on the surface. So, that happens because if the sand used is of very fine quality very fine size which has or the if the clay percentage is more in those cases the sand has low refractoriness values. As we know that refractoriness value also will be varying with the sand grain size as well as its purity. So, if there is not much of purity or if there is very small size of sand grains which is near the molten metal surface or if the clay percentage is more because of which there will be loss of the refractoriness value in those cases this uh, fusion may occur on the surface and the surface we will have to remove. So, surface finish will be basically uh, poor. So, in so for that you have to take the molten metal of adequate refractoriness and uh, uh, proper size of the sand. So, that you have adequate uh, refractoriness and the fusion is avoided. You have also to see that there is not much of the clay involved which reduces its refractoriness. Run out run out is that kind of defect in which the molten metal basically comes out of the mold. So, because of the faulty mold making this run out takes place. So, for that you have to see the properly the mold making procedure. So, that there is at no point the mold metal. So, molten metal should come out. So, that is run out. Rat tails and buckles. So, rat tails is basically you have the appearance of uh, very lines small lines uh, like rat tail on the rat tail there are certain impressions. So, similar kind of impressions is observed on the casting surface that is why it is known as rat tail. So, this is basically uh, occurring because of the compression failure at the surface of the casting from inside. So, what happens at the high temperature uh, if there is not proper expansion properties in the sand. So, at that high temperature the sand will expand and further it must while the metal cools it must adjust according to the metal or properly. So, that the sand and metal interface is smooth. Now, if the expansion properties of this molding sand is not adequate if there is not much of carbonaceous material we have <coughs> understood that there are uses of additives in the case of molding sand. So, that proper expansion properties are ensured. So, if there is not of the adequate of these carbonaceous materials or these uh, materials which give proper expansion properties in those cases the sand gives away the surface gives away and then there is cracks to accommodate that 
stress which is generated at that point the sand surface gives away and that basically generates small cracks on the surface and that is known as rat tails and when it is very severe it is known as buckles. So, this is because of so for removing this the remedy is that you must use proper additives carbonaceous materials dextrin and molasses. So, that you have proper expansion properties in the molding material. Swell, swell is the increase in the dimension of the mold. So, because of that uh, the size of the casting becomes larger and this happens because of the casting I mean mold not able to withstand the metal static pressure of the molten metal. So, if your mold is not having adequate strength, if it does not have proper strength, proper ramming is not done, then in that case when you pour the molten metal it becomes oversized. So, that is known as swell. So, for that you have to do the proper ramming, the mold must have adequate strength, so that this uh, defect is not taking place. So, to ensure that you must do proper ramming, proper strength must be there in the mold. Drop, drop is basically <coughs> when you have the coke portion and if the some particle from the coke that is sand particle falls on the surface of the casting that is known as drop. So, if there is improper ramming of the sand in the cope portion in that case there is chances that the sand from the cope portion falls into the casting and it floats on the surface it goes on the surface that is known as the drop. So, you the remedy is that so improper ramming in the cope portion is the cause and you should do go for proper ramming that is its remedy you must do proper ramming of the cope portion. Next is the defects because of the pouring metal. So, under that you have defect like misrun and cold shuts. So, misrun and cold shuts are because of the pouring metal which is going inside the mold. Now, misrun is that because of certain reasons the molten metal is not able to go till the last point in the cavity. So, that is known as misrun. So, basically the cavity is sort of molten metal. So, that is misrun. So, misrun may be because of improper fluidity of the metal. We know that molten metal goes inside the cavity because of the fluidity property. So, if the fluidity is not high in those cases the metal may not reach to the extreme end. So, one reason is fluidity and fluidity is basically affected by the temperature. So, other, other factors remaining constant you have the temperature which is in your control. So, if the proper temperature is there then fluidity will be better. If the temperature is lower the fluidity becomes less. So, you must maintain proper pouring temperature to maintain proper fluidity. So, that metal goes inside the cavity with proper fluidity and goes to the farthest point with ease. Another reason may be because of very coarse grains. So, if the coarse grain of sand is used uh, or and if it is there on the surface where metal is flowing then there will be large resistance offered by these surfaces uh, to the molten metal flowing. So, that may also limit the distance up to which the molten metal goes with ease. So, you must have a proper surface proper finish to the surface proper use of sand grains. So, that the fluidity is adequate and the cavity is filled properly. The next is cold shut. So, cold shut misran and cold shut are both same other but in the case of cold shut it is for such castings where the molten metal goes in two different directions and they have to meet at some point. So, basically in ideal case or in most of the cases you must they must meet at a proper temperature. So, that they fuse properly. Uh, if that temperature is not proper if that prop temperature is not adequate 
in that case this fusion is not proper and there may be a line uh, a defect line that shows that they are not properly fused or that is a defect known as cold shut. So, it is because again of the more time taken or more temperature lost during the flow of this liquid metal from the two sides to directions and they are not able to fuse properly. So, again the reason is may be because of the improper fluidity and improper design of the mold because of it if, if it goes in one direction and the metal comes from other direction and if in some cases if it is losing more of its superheat in that case it is not able to fuse properly. So, those defect which is occurred is known as cold shut. So, they can again further be prevented by having the adequate fluidity to the metal having adequate temperature to the melt. Slag inclusions, slag inclusions are again the formation of slags. So, that is because of the improper fluxing of the material. So, slags are there, these slags are basically not able to be. So, once we are not able to trap these slags properly, then these slags go into the melt. So, we must have adequate methods first of all to remove these slags. So, if you do improper fluxing in that case slags are more there and slags may go inside the melt and then that makes the slag inclusions. So, these slag inclusions are uh, can be removed by proper uh, flexing of the material and proper filtering of the slags when they go inside the melt. So, that way you can remove them. So, if you look at such kind of defects like misran or cold such if you look at see the liquid metal has not been able to go up to this level so that is misran. Similarly, the metal is coming from both the extremes and if they are not able to proper fuse properly fuse then it is a defect known as cold shut. Then the next defect is uh, metallurgical defect because of the metallurgical parameters and one of them is hot tear. So, as the name indicates there is a tearing action because of that there will be cracks observed that is known as hot tear. Now, hot tear is basically observed uh, near the solidus temperature line when we are basically uh, cooling an alloy or the material which has a solidus I mean solidification range. Then what happens that during the cooling uh, initially it is completely liquid and as the temperature goes down the matrix will be consisting of liquid as well as solid particles. So, you can see in the case of uh, binary alloys. So, what happens now in those cases as the temperature comes down here you have completely liquid and as the temperature comes here you will have more of liquid and less of solid more of liquid less of solid. So, just below that as we move the solid goes on increasing more of solid less of liquid now what happens that when we come near this region then in that case you have a network where mostly you have liquid and then you have mostly you have solid and then you have some portions of liquid now in those in these situations or if you come closer to this even closer to the solidus line most of the network is solidified and you there will have some pockets of liquid lines. Now, under these cases what happens that the structure is weaker and in those cases if you experience certain kind of tearing then in that time the metal or the material has very low yield strength at that temperature. Also, if you have 
certain eutectic low temperature eutectic like iron phosphide in case of iron, then in those cases they solidify their melting temperature is basically even smaller. So, layout low temperature eutectic presence that also makes because that makes the that situation I mean that region even weaker. So, in those situations even a small tearing or even a small because of the change in the design of the casting or, or the uh, shape of the casting, if there is any experience of tearing observed in that case the, the casting fails. So, there will be tear observed and then that is known as hot tear. So, as we see, so in the case of this, so what happens? So, as we discussed you have more liquid here, here you will have mostly solid and some part, so some part solid and mostly liquid. So, you will have all liquid and some solid, some part are solid and then mostly liquid. However, when it comes at this point, you will have mostly solid and very small part as liquid. So, you will have all this as solid and some part may have liquid. And at this during this temperature range, if there is any tearing observed because of that, so your uh, strength is very small and if it is not able to sustain in those cases because this liquid uh, pool is completely isolated and as during the solidification, during that process of solidification, the, the because of the its uh, geometry or structure when this tearing observed and then uh, there is uh, crack formation that is known as hot tear. So, this is normally more aggravated when you have larger solidification range. So, you will have to see that there is not much of the solidification range of the material. So, you should take the proper material of lower solidification range. So, in that case you will have lower possibility of these uh, hot tear kind of formation. Similarly, hot spots. So, hot spot is something which is because of the, the formation of hot I mean chilling. So, in many cases when we are cooling and because of the presence of chills or because of the improper cooling at certain places where the cooling is very high, you have formation of hot spots. So, this this is basically typically the problem is found when we are making the gray iron. So, if you have the chilling at certain point the gray iron is not converted basically you do not find gray iron you find the white iron because of the chilling. So, that point is known as so that is a hot spot. So, these are the different kinds of casting defects which have the causes and properly remedies are to be taken. And and that is how you can get a defect free casting. Thank you.